So before we start this lesson, I just want to give you a quick recap on how we write standard form. So this is your key information. It's always written like this in this form. So I've just called the first number A. This number here has to be between 1 and 10. Now it can be the number 1 and then any number, including decimals, all the way up to 10, but it can't equal 10. So we can have 9.9 .9 recurring, we just can't have the number 10 here. It's always multiplied by 10, it's never divided by 10, and it's always 10, not any other number. And we call this the base, so the base is always 10. And then here, what I've called n is our power. So we might have something like 2 times 10 to the power of 5. And that's a number written in standard form. OK, so I'm going to do some examples with you now on how to write something that looks as though it's in standard form notation into correct standard form notation. So take this example here. It says 12 times 10 to the power of 4. So that looks like it's in standard form notation, but it's not quite correct because we know that this number here should be a number between 1 and 10. And this is not. It's 12. So we need to decrease this value. Now, because we're always working with powers of 10, this is times 10 to the power of 4, the easiest thing for us to do is to decrease this by a power of 10. So all I'm going to do is divide this by 10. So if I do 12 divided by 10, that will give me 1.2. Now, 1.2 times 10 to the power of 4 is not the same thing as 12 times 10 to the power of 4. I've decreased it by a power of 10. I've changed that value and I don't want to change it. I just want to rewrite it in a different way. So to compensate, because I've divided this by 10, I need to times this by 10. OK, so this is the same thing. This is equivalent equal to this. OK, I've divided this by 10 and I've times this by 10. So let's just rewrite this then. So this here is 1.2 and this 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, because that's what 10 to the power of 4 is, times another 10 is just 10 to the power of 5. And that's my answer. That is the same thing as this here. They are equal to each other. I've just rewritten it in a different way. I've rewritten it in correct standard form notation. So the answer is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5. Let's have a look at another one here. So this time I have 0 0.32 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So the problem with this one is that this number's too small. So instead of dividing it by 10, I'm going to multiply it by 10. So I'm going to take my 0.32 and multiply it by 10. Now, if I've multiplied this by 10, I'm going to have to divide this part by 10 in order to compensate so that they are still equal to keep that balance. So 0.32 times 10 gives me 3.2, which is perfect because it needs to be a number between 1 and 10. And then here I have 10 to the power of minus 6, and I'm decreasing that by another power of 10. So minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7. So just be careful with the uh, negative powers, and I get minus 7 there. And that's it in correct standard form notation. That's my answer. And then finally, I've got this one here. So I've got 0.043 times 10 to the power of 5. So this number here, if I multiply this by 10, I'm still not going to get a number between 1 and 10. I actually need to multiply it by 10 twice or multiply it by 100. So what I'm multiplying it by is 10 squared. OK, that's my power of 10 that I need to multiply this by. So I'm just going to write that there. And then obviously to compensate here, I'm going to have to, if I've multiplied this by um, 10 squared, I'm going to have to divide this part by 10 squared. So I get this here. So this first part, if I times this by 100 or times it by 10 twice, I get 4.3, which is perfect. I need a number between 1 and 10. And then here, this is where sort of laws of indices start to come in. If I do 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 squared, then I get 10 to the power of 3. OK, so that's my answer. That's in correct standard form notation. And there it is. So here's three for you to do um, quite similar questions. 
one a couple with a negative power in there some more difficult questions so have a go at those pause the video and unpause when you're ready for me to go through the answers with you okay so here are the solutions so first one here I need to multiply this by 10 which means dividing this by 10 so I get that so this is 8.5 and this is 10 to the power of 10 and that's my answer next one I have to divide this by 10 to get 6.5 a number between 1 and 10 which means this needs to be multiplied by 10 so I get 6.5 here and then this here I'm raising it a power of 10 I'm increasing the power of 10 by 1 so my minus 3 is going to increase to minus 2 so just be careful there that you didn't get minus 4 okay and then last one I need to decrease this by a power of 10 twice decreasing it once will give me 79 which isn't a number between 1 and 10 so I'm going to divide it by 10 squared or you could write divide by 10 divide by 10 that's fine so to compensate this needs to be multiplied by 10 twice or times by 10 squared so we get 7.9 here and at this part I'm increasing it by a power of 10 twice so minus 9 add 2 is minus 7 and that's my answer there Okay, if you want a bit more practice on these or a bit of a challenge, then I've got this task for you to do. So in each one, you need to determine what is the value of N. Okay, so in this one here, what value of N would make these two statements equal to each other? And as you do this, you should find that they have matching pairs. So if the answer to this one is 12, there will be another card somewhere, another question that has an answer of 12 as well. So you should be able to match them up and it's a way of checking that you're getting it right. So you can pause this now and work through this and then unpause when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, here are the answers. So I've written them into the equation. So you can see that this one here was eight and I've just put them in a different color so they stand out a little bit and you can match them up easier. So this one here had a value of eight for N and so did this one here that had a value of eight for N. And again, you can pause the video so you can take your time and check through your answers. Thank you for watching my lesson. I'm Mrs. Jagger. If you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.